Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd, and today I'm going to teach you Chapter 5, Lesson 1, which is all about solving systems of linear equations by graphing. Please turn to page 134 of your journals. First, some vocab words. A system of linear equations is a set of two or more linear equations. The solution of a system of linear equations is the ordered pair x, y, where the lines in the system intersect. It is important that you write your answer as x comma y as a point. A lot of students will want to just say x equals something and y equals something, and that's technically not quite correct. You do want to write your answer as an x, y point because that is what it is. So how do we solve a system of linear equations by graphing? Step one is to graph each equation in the same coordinate plane. Step two, estimate the point of intersection. And step three is to check that point that you got in step two by substituting the x and the y in to each equation of the original system and see if it works. On page 135 in exercises one through six, tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the system of linear equations. So we're given a point and we're given the set of linear equations. So we have two lines here and we need to try and decide does this point work? Is that the solution for this set? So the answer is going to be yes or no. Now remember the point is x and y. So all we need to do is substitute in the x for the x and substitute in the y for the y. So the first uh, equation x plus y equals 4 would be 3 plus 1 equals 4. And that does indeed work. So now let's plug it into the second one. So 3 is going to go for x and 1 is going to go in for the y. So we have 2 multiplied by x which is 3 minus 1 equals 3. So that's 6 minus 1 equals 3. This does not work. So that means that my answer is no. The point 3 comma 1 is not the solution to that set of linear equations. So let's take a look at number 4. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to substitute in those numbers. So this is my x and this is my y. So the first equation is x, which is negative 1, minus 2 times y, which is negative 2 in the point, equals 3. So that's negative 1, and then this turns into a plus 4, equals 3. So that does work. Let's plug it into the next one. 2 multiplied by x, which is negative 1, minus y, which is negative 2. Notice I have a double negative there, equals 0. So this is negative 2. That turns into a plus 2, equals 0. So that does work. So it works for both, which means my answer is yes. That is a solution. I would like for you to go ahead and do 2, 3, 5, and 6 on your own. For number 2, I got yes. For number 3, I also got yes. For number five, it's no, and number six is yes. If you did not get it correct, please pause the video and see if you can find your mistakes. To make this a shorter video, I'm going to skip number seven, eight, and nine. So please turn to page 136. In exercises 10 through 15, solve the system of linear equations by graphing. On number 10, I have a y-intercept of three. So I'm going to plot that. And then I have a slope of negative one. So I want to make sure to put all of my points on the graph all the way because that will help me when I'm finding my answer. Okay, and the other equation has a y-intercept of positive five and a slope of positive one. So I'm going the other direction and this time I'm not going to bother uh, going the whole way because I can already see where they intersect. So the, in, they intersect at negative one comma four, so that's my answer. And now it's always good just to plug it back in to make sure that that actually is the answer. So if I plug it back into my original equation, we have negative, negative 1 plus 3 should equal my y, which is 4. And that does work. And on the other one, we have 4 is equal to negative 1 plus 5, which also works. So since it checks out with both, we know our answer is correct. Let's take a look at number 12. The first thing I notice on number 12 is that this equation is written in standard form. So whenever we have an equation written in standard form, the easiest way to find, to graph it is to plug in zeros. So I'm gonna plug in zero for x 
and that gives me negative 2y is equal to 6, which means y is equal to negative 3. So 0 comma negative 3 is my y-intercept. And now I'm going to find my x-intercept by plugging in 0 for y, and we get x, we get 3x is equal to 6, and so 2 is my x-intercept. And I notice that uh, the slope then is up 3 and over 2. So if I wanted to put a couple more points here, I could certainly do that. Okay, my next line is y is equal to negative 3. So that's crossing the y-axis at negative 3, and it's a horizontal line. So I can see that my answer is here, which is 0 comma negative 3. And let's go ahead and plug that in and see if we get it right. So if I plug it into the top one, 3 times x is 0, minus 2 times negative 3 equals 6, which it does. And the next one, y is negative 3, and that equals negative 3, and that also works. So we got it correct. Please do number 11 on your own. For number 11, I got a point of 2 comma 3. Let's skip to number 16. A test has 20 questions worth 100 points. The test consists of x, true-false questions, worth 4 points each, and y, multiple choice questions, worth 8 points each. How many of each type of question are there on the test? So the first thing that I want to do is write my equations. So I have a total of 20 questions altogether. And so we have some number x plus some number y is equal to 20. And my next equation is I have it talks about the points. So I have 100 points total. I have four points for the x's and eight points for the y's. So we're going to go four for the x's plus eight for the y's equals a total of 100 points total. So let's go ahead and graph this. So I'm going to start by graphing the x plus y equals 20. So this again is written in standard form. So the easiest way is to plug in zero. So if I plug in zero for x, y is equal to 20. And if I plug in zero for y, x is equal to 20. So I know that my x and y intercepts are here and here. And I also know that it's going to be a perfect slope heading down. OK, let's go ahead and graph this one here. I'm going to take a look and see if I can find my x, y, and plug in my zeros. So if I plug in 0 for x, I get 8y is equal to 100, which means that the y-intercept is 12 and a half, 12.5. If I plug in 0 for y, I get 4x is equal to 100, so that means my x-intercept is 25. So 25 is not on my graph, but 12 and a half is. So since, so 12 and a half is about here. So since uh, 25 is not on my graph, I do need to find the slope of this line. So to find the slope, I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 4x on both sides, and I get 8y is equal to negative 4x plus 100. And now I'm going to divide by 8. So when I do that, I already know that my y-intercept is 12 and a half. And that means and my slope is negative 4 over 8, which is the same as negative 1 half. So I'm going to go ahead and count down 1 over 2 and go the entire length here until I run out of space. So here is my second equation. So now we need to find out where they intersect. Uh, it looks like they intersect right about here, which looks like it's at 15 and 5. So I'm gonna, I think that that's my answer. I definitely need to plug it in because um, since my graph isn't very, you know, it's, it's, it's in between the grid lines, so I definitely need to plug it in. So if I plug in 15 and 5, um, on the first equation, we have 15 plus 5 equals 20, so that definitely does work. So now I'm going to plug it into the second equation. So we have 4 multiplied by 15 plus 8 multiplied by 5 equals 100, and guess what? That actually does work as well. So we know that we have 15 x's, and x's, if you remember, is true-false questions. So 15 true-false questions, and we have five y's, which we know are the multiple-choice questions. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.